G'day guys, welcome to the Purple Fringe. This is the show where we chat about the high end of low end digital media production. And today, Chris, we've got Sony's latest member of the family. This is the PXW Z150 digital video camera. I've been excited about this camera for a while. It was something that when I read about it on paper, it, it just ticked a lot of boxes. Mm. And you know, if you've used the, uh, for instance, the Z5 or the Z7, or even the PD150, 170 that comes before it, these are legendary Sony cameras. They are the cameras that enabled independent documentaries, independent music clips. Um, they all know, look the same. They look very <laughs> similar, but this is a little bit different to the traditional model. They've changed the mm. size, they've done a few things, but let's have an explore of this camera because it is very much the follow-on from these legendary cameras that have been around for the last 12 years from Sony. And um, mm. I think we might have another winner here, John. What do you reckon? Yeah, look, it's, it's basically the same camera, but it's been updated for modern standards. So it's 4K first and foremost. It's using Sony's new stacked uh, one inch CMOS sensor. Yep, um, so rather than having a three CCD, so they used yep. to have three sensors and this mm -hmm. very complicated prism, prism system. Yep. And it meant if you knocked your camera, you could misalign the thing, well, I've done that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so don't, so this technically should be slightly uh, more resilient to mm. knocks and things and like that. It's a bigger sensor as well. So technically we should be able to get a, a shallower depth of field and more light into the camera. Um, it's also got you know, the modern stuff, Wi-Fi and smartphone control and all that sort of business. Um, records to dual uh, SD cards, which is yep. fantastic. And um, yeah, it's just an updated version of what has come before it. So yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, in holding this camera, it's it's got everything that you're familiar with with the Sony camera, which is great. You know, you've got access to everything. Certainly, if you're coming from the DSLR world and you you want to have something that is uh, very run and gun, very accessible, where you want to be able to quickly jump to your you know your your gain and your shutter controls and quickly do a white balance. Of course, your three ring system on the front of the lens here is just. It's the de facto standard for running a video camera. In fact, this is what defines it really as being a, a video camera. Um, it has perfectly smooth iris controls, very smooth uh, zoom control and, and focusing, which isn't actually connected to the lens. It is servo controlled, so yeah. it is still going through a computer to talk to the lens, which means the ring goes around forever, but it doesn't focus forever, obviously. So there's a few things like that, but you've got the killer ND filters. I mean, you need mm. ND filters when you're going from indoors to outdoors and things like that. There are so many reasons why this camera has the switches and the knobs that you need to be able to shoot independent documentaries, music, uh, news, I mean, anything where you need to think on the fly and run quick. Yeah, quick that turnaround time. is what this camera is for. So in terms of what the camera comes with, it's pretty standard fare. You obviously get the camera itself, you get the USB cables, the power cables, a charger, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, uh, a battery. This uses the NPF series of batteries. Mm -hmm. It's a 770 that you get with it. We um, very quickly upgraded that to the 970, the, the larger small. capacity battery. Yeah. Um, so it's worth buying a couple of those. In terms of the, the other stuff that you do need, obviously you need to get some memory in terms of this camera, it's SD cards. So we grabbed a couple of high speed 64 gigs. It's got dual slots. Um, most importantly perhaps is that it doesn't come with a shotgun mic. Many of the previous mm. iterations of this style of camera, with the exceptions of things like perhaps the X160 uh, and X180, um, they've generally come with a shotgun mic. This one didn't, so we've paired it up with uh, a Rode NTG 4 Plus. Um, one of the things you'll note, as we discovered, is they don't come with what they call a spacer, which is a, a little rubber uh, sort of flap that wraps around the shotgun mic, which allows it to sit snugly within the shotgun mount. So just something to be aware of, because these things, for what they are, are bloody expensive. How much They're did nearly, you pay for it? Nearly $40 for what is <laughs> essentially 50 cents worth of rubber. <laughs> So um, be aware of that if you are going with a, a non-Sony microphone. And you can lose them as well. I've lo lost uh, yeah. a couple and uh, I've made one out of gaffer tape. It does work. You can wrap your yes. mics in gaffer, but it's just Or it's not local cool. hardware store <laughs> yeah. and a bit of uh, rubber tubing and a bit of manufacture out of that. Yeah, but, you know, it's not cool. Come on, Sony. At least yeah. give us the adapter, you know, exactly. so you don't have to buy this $40 accessory that should cost a dollar. Yeah. But if anyway, that. small grab. Yeah. So speaking of smaller things, this is a... a a slightly diminutive version mm. of the cameras that have come before it. It isn't as large in terms of physical dimensions and it doesn't weigh as much as many of the cameras that have come before it, things like the, the Z7 or the 160, the X160. In fact, the X160 I think is about 3.2 kilos. This yeah. is nearly a kilo less. So this is a lighter weight camera than many of the others that are out there. It's not as small as perhaps the X70, which is much lighter weight. 
um, or perhaps even the NEX EA50H, that was a little bit lighter. However, it is lighter than what I expected. In fact, when I picked it up for the first time, even though it's only mm. a little bit lighter than some of the other cameras, you notice that when you do pick it up. You do. However, there is something that I instantly noticed when I picked this up, and that is even with the battery on, and I haven't got a battery on this at the moment, but the battery actually disappears right inside the body. Mm. Uh, it, it is significantly shorter than the previous models of Sony's. And when I use one of these, it's typically about that long, and I rest it like this and have the screen that sits about there. Now with this, the screen is there. If I'm shooting with the same style, everything's like 10 centimeters. And it's, to, for me, that style of shooting suddenly doesn't really work anymore. Testing out your so, eyesight there. Yeah, and, it's, and so when you start doing this, I mean, there's always about triangles and trying to hold the camera so that it's, you know, it's comfortable and that it pivots well. I mean, you can get shoulder mounts and things, but we're talking a camera out of the box that you just pull out, you know, fire up and shoot within, you know, mm, few 10 seconds. seconds. Yeah. That's what these really excel at. Mm. And for me, this length, they, they've made it stubby. And I really miss, I really miss that little bit of, of length on the end. And even if the screen sort of came out here, it would work a lot better for me. But that was just an instant grime. Um, I had with this. And look, I'm gonna bring it up right now. There's something on this camera that just destroys me and that is that they put the menu options on the top. Now traditionally, Sony had a little uh, little roller and they've had this for years mm. on the side where you just press menu and you just roll up and down to change your additional options that you often need while you're shooting. Yep. Um, and if you decide you suddenly need something, especially while you're shooting on a tripod and you, you know, you're fairly high, You've got to get to your menu options up here. You, a, you can't see them if it's on a tripod. And when it's down low, you know, you're holding a camera like this and suddenly this hand is in the strap and you need to get to your menu, you're suddenly doing this. And it's just, what were you thinking, yeah, Sony? It, it you thinking? seems like such a little thing that the menu button is on top instead oh. of on the side. But every other Sony camera, at least that may not, may not be true. Many other cameras may have it on top, but every other camera I've used has been on the side. So I instinctively go to the side. You get used to it, but I mean, look, there's so much space on the back I don't of know this. If you do get used to it. But, <laughs> but where would there be, you know, there's, there's the option to put it a I'll little I'll put it on the side like every other Sony Yeah, but camera. a little like a little joystick thing yeah. on the back, you know, like the, if, anyway. Yeah, we won't go into it. But. Um, the lens, the lens is pretty good and we'll get to the details of that in a minute. But one of the areas where it differentiates from many of the other cameras like the Z7 and like the X160 is that it is a shorter zoom range. So this is a 12 times zoom. It does have clear zoom, which is Sony's new proprietary technology, mm. which enables you to do a, a digital zoom. Now, digital zoom is a pretty dirty word, but Sony seems to do it pretty well. In fact, I've they don't do crazy. Success I mean, with it. The, the old school digital zoom was was yeah, three hundred times digital three hundred times digital zoom. You know, yeah. it's nothing like that. It's only giving you an extra maybe you know two times 50%, generally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so y y you're not getting that much gain, but is it, it is the difference between framing someone uh, as a mid shot from the back of a room uh, to mm -hmm. getting them, you know, as a, as a sort of more of a long shot. So yeah. I guess that it, it's there and it doesn't seem to degrade the image, you know. No, look, it looks it seems pretty good from what I've seen. Um, you do have a, a bit of a loss in terms of full H, uh, sorry, 4K, which is camera support. So you don't get the full two times extra zoom that you normally will mm. clear zoom. You get an from a 12 to an 18 time zoom in this particular scenario and you get a little bit more in HD. However, the, the other cameras in this sort of category had bigger optical zooms. So I think you're mm. around the 20 time zoom for the, the Z5, the yep. Z7, and for something like the X160 and the X180, uh, you were looking at 20 times, uh, 25 times optical yeah. zoom. So that is something that I'd like to have seen on this camera. Yeah. Now, one thing we noticed when we were testing this camera earlier today is that some features don't actually work with the clear zoom <laughs> function, things like facial tracking. So one of the new mod cons of these digital cameras is that instead of just simple autofocus, they're meant to track people's faces as well. So it ensures that if nothing else, you get someone's face in focus, mm. which is generally pretty important but it doesn't work with clear zoom as we discovered today. And you, it's kind of weird because you have this transition as you're zooming in and out between clear zoom and optical zoom and suddenly the facial tracking works and then suddenly it doesn't. And it depends on that little envelope mm. as you transition between the clear zoom and the optical zoom. And you can't crash zoom either. It's not like uh, where you've got a manual zoom control. The zoom's a bit slow for me. 
uh, you know, you want to quickly you know, slam in and get something, you know, focused and and because you see something at the other side of the room. I want that, especially documentary making. It gets quite hard to, you know, when you you know you've got to work for it and you sort of find yourself madly stabbing at the controls a bit. But look, you know, this is a five thousand dollar. Well, depends where Roughly. what dollar. Yeah. Uh, currency you're working on, but is it, you know, five, six thousand dollar camera and, and you can't expect the world from it. Um, so there are these little limitations that you will come across. Mm. Um, but the biggest thing with the lens for me, and I've got to say it is, I'll put this on the record, is that um, I'd bought an RX-10, which is a point and shoot, mm. but the zoom lens was a constant uh, F2.8 Zeiss lens assembly that shoots pictures that are out of this world. And it's the same sensor array and a lot of the same software and stuff that runs a camera. Mm. But when I picked this up, I realized that the lens was limiting me to, to being F4 when I was zoomed in, which means you lose that depth of field. Sometimes, especially if you're doing news work or doco work or even, uh, you know, bands and things like that, you want to actually pull the background out of focus and not show, you know, too much of the background. You do get separation on this, don't get me wrong, mm. but you don't get as much separation as I, I would expect. Yeah. But, you know, that's a small qualm. Um, but you're, we're saying a lot of things, I guess, about this camera that are the things that irk us about it, but there's a lot that's yeah, that really I like. good about Firstly, it. Firstly, it's got a handle, as all these cameras do in terms of this mm. style of form factor. It seems like a, a silly thing, but having a good handle battery is Battery on this thing. Come on, let's, let's balance it up properly. Balance let's, it up. All right. Gee, uh, I'm ducking down. The battery has disappeared. Oh, gee, hang on. Battery's in the Hold other on, room. Kids. Other Keep room. talking. Keep talking. All right, well, Chris is out of the room looking for a battery. Things I do like about this camera, I do like the size and the weight. It is a little bit small for jacking into your shoulder, as Chris mentioned earlier, which could be a little bit of a problem. Battery doesn't we'll stick the battery in. Ooh, it adds a little bit to it. It does. <laughs> Those batteries are heavy. Yeah. So look, uh, in terms of the balance, once you have a big battery in here, it's not too bad, but you can't really anchor it against your shoulder anywhere, mm. which is a little bit of a problem. A really little thing, they've called the, the playback button thumbnail, which might seem like a tiny thing, but they used to call it visual index on some of their other cameras. So I'm glad that they've made that a little bit more sensibly named. Yep. Other notes here, in terms of the chromatic aberration for this particular lens, I've pushed this pretty hard as we're seeing right now. If you, you go over the top, it, it shows a little bit of purple fringing. Hey. <laughs> uh, is that a drink offense? Yeah, no. I think it is. Ah! Oh. You'll get used to that show. A bit of purple fringing. Uh, but if, look, if you expose sensibly, I guess is the best word, you won't get too much in terms of chromatic aberration. Other I, was notes, very, I was very impressed, especially yeah, at the end of the good. lens. A lot of the time when you push in right to that telly part of the lens, um, especially shooting on a cloudy day and you've got mm. silver objects and stuff, I find I'm, I often shoot down at the beach with test footage and you'll just see things fall apart. Mm. Uh, and this, this actually held up quite quite well. And it's still really sharp at the end of the lens. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's 4K range. It's lens, it, it doesn't have a weak spot, really. I mean, it's wide is a little bendy, but it's, it's telly is it's great. It's pretty so. good, yeah. Look, in terms of the mod cons, I actually tried out the, the Wi-Fi. I was extremely skeptical of this. I thought this would be a load of crap. <laughs> and look, it still could be better, definitely. But the one thing I was really impressed with is the lag. Uh, once you mm. actually work out what the hell app you're meant to download, you connect to this as a Wi-Fi access point and it says you use the app. What do you search for? Sony, Sony something, Sony Wi-Fi control. No, it's none of Isn't those it? things. It's in the manual. Um, it, <laughs> I thought it was Play Memories. It's open content browser or something oh, ridiculous. Okay, wow. Anyway, once you get it set up, it's actually pretty good in terms of the lag. In fact, it's probably less than a quarter of a second. You can control focus, you can control zoom, that sort of thing. So look, if you had one of these as uh, sort of a, you know, a wide camera in the background mm. and you want to zoom in or pull out a little bit or refocus, then you could definitely do that through uh, the remote control of a smartphone app, which and is really is, cool. And it is handy if you're in a situation um, you know, where you want to be able to start and stop the camera remotely and you want to be yeah. able to like upload clips as you go and things like that. I mean, it has the ability not too to bad. do all yeah. of that from a, a remote access. The LCD is really nice. In fact, I think, I don't know the tech specs, but to my eye, it seems like a, an upgraded version of many mm. of the lenses. It's not Sorry, full HD, it's, it's about um, 720p, as far as it I can tell. It looks nice, it's clean, it's clear. And with I'm peaking turned on, that will just sharpen the edges a bit. You can really yeah. tell if you're in focus. Certainly for an HD image. I think 4K, you still need to use the punch in button. The downside again is that you punch into your zoom and you want to you want to actually uh, you know move around your, your focus point to see where it is. You have to use the menus on top. Mm. So you're sort of there, you know, and then you want to use the focus and your hands here, and then you got to move that hand around here. So it's back to that thing of the menu being on top. But yep. honestly, it's a small price to pay for the the fact it's in there as a feature, and it's very very helpful. Built-in lens hood. 
Yeah, that's open close. It's open been around close. since. It's yeah. been around for ages. But ages. I like it yeah, because it there's no lens cap to lose. Yeah. You take the lens cap off, you throw it in the bag. Yeah. The bag's not there, you put it in your pocket and you yeah, sit I've on it. I've got one in my pocket it. right now, I think. Yeah. Am I? Am I? yeah, there we go. That's a good feature. And the hood. <laughs> it's an FS7. What else uh, is on this list, Chris? Ah, the lens. The lens is not too susceptible to lens flare, and the flares that it does get, I think, uh, are quite aesthetically yeah. pleasing. Uh, nice, uh, you know, Transformers style. What's that? Michael Bay. Michael, Michael Bay. Bay style lens flares, <laughs> if you're up for that. This camera yeah. can provide them. It's the uh, EVF on the back here, it's. It's all right, it's pretty good. Um, it's reasonably clear. There is a little bit of lag, so be wary of that. Also, by default, this camera detects if you're looking at the, at the mm. EVF or the LCD. So the first thing, of course, when you get this camera is to start going through the LCD and programming things, and you bring it up to your, your shoulder, and the screen goes off, and you go, oh, something's wrong. Oh, it's working again. Uh, oh. Something's wrong. Oh, it's, it's detecting that uh, your eye is meant to be up to the EVF and it switches off the LCD, which is a pain in the ass. Frankly, you can switch that off. <laughs> and I'm gonna talk about something here. This is yeah. really annoying as a default because there is a button here that actually allows you to switch from your viewfinder to your LCD. And it's clearly marked. And this brings us to the defaults mm. on this camera. Are you a big fan mm. of the uh, the defaults? Defaults might seem like a pretty silly thing to nitpick over, but in my role, I often need to reset things to factory defaults just to ensure mm. that things are the way I intend them to be. And they're just weird. Things like default to interlaced recording in HD as opposed to 4K. I can kind of understand the HD, but not the interlaced bit. They turn off clear zoom by default. Um, peaking and histograms, all those things are gone. The buttons, I'll get to this a little bit later, but the button defaults I don't think are particularly good. Again, I mean, for the price point, it's just something that, you know, is, is a little, little niggle. And oh, another one, just this little rocker, instead of having a constant rolly uh, control, you know, when you want to try to get your uh, shutter suddenly right the way open or something like that, or your, um, your gain right the way up, you just roll up and it goes and you feel the, the notches on the roller and you can feel through seven or eight different moves. This, there's one move, yeah, up, there's two up, moves. Up, 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 yeah. Like, you know, you're it's sitting silly. there a hundred times hitting yeah. this button, you know, or not hundred, okay, maybe 10 or 15 times, but that's a lot of time to mash away at a button. To or actually, you have to use this stupid D-pad on top of the camera. Or you have to jump in back into the menu system. So remember you're running with XLR inputs on this as well. So yeah. if you've come from a background of uh, using 3.5 jacks or something like that, you're gonna have to make sure you've got XLR inputs for all of your stuff. Yep. That's a good thing. I mean, XLR is a, a better standard. Yep. And the good thing is they are line switchable. Uh, so you can switch them between line and mic mode. This actually has proper input, so you can take in from mixing desks, you can pad it. The audio quality on this is phenomenal. That's mm. absolutely so phenomenal. It does have a built-in mic as well, just if you need scratch audio. In terms of the, um, the low light, it's not a low light camera. Yeah. Not well, much else to say. I don't it's know. It's not it, a low light camera, it's not however, bad. It's not bad. the gain does pretty well. Yeah. So if you set this to zero dB gain, it's not a low light camera. However, you can crank the gain a reasonable amount and mm. it still looks pretty clean. In fact, you can go to 9 dB without even thinking about it. And you can probably go higher without running the risk of someone going, oh, why does that look so noisy? Mm. So the gain on this is pretty good. Um, however, it isn't sucking in a ton of light. The similar cameras from yesteryear that yes, they had one third inch sensors, much smaller sensors, mm. they had much faster lenses. So yep. you were at 1.6, I think, on the wides of some of these cameras, and this yep. is at 2.8. Um, your rolling shutter effect is pretty good on this. Mm. Um, it's, it's not perfect, it's pretty good though. So, so you get a much faster readout than you would have on the this, the earlier CMOS sensors. Yeah, so you can swing around and you can, um, you know, uh, get away with most things. In fact, I hadn't really thought about it, Chris, but I hadn't actually noticed any rolling shutter artifacts on yeah. this camera. And that's and the that's thing, why you, you don't notice because it's not really there. It is if you swing really hard, but it would have to be something almost unusable. It's a very good cutaway camera. So on the depth of field thing, if you are looking for deep depth field, if you are shooting documentaries, if you are shooting news, if you just want to get things in focus and you don't care about the Boca Boca boys, then this is a pretty good camera. Whereas, as Chris said, it's not going to give you the shallow depth of field, the cinematic style, the, the SLR look. So be aware of that if you are looking at this camera. In terms of macro stuff, because it does have a, a smaller sensor size, um, and a reasonably well-designed lens. It does handle macro very well. In mm. fact, here's a couple of shots that I've taken over the last couple of weeks that demonstrate 
it really can focus quite close up and you get some really nice details. So we've got, you know, just a couple of plants here and a couple of uh, beads of water on top of a very small leaf. And you can see that it manages to focus really well and maintain a lot of that detail. The, the only problem by that point is if you're going handheld, obviously, you know, you, you, your stabilizer is going to work, but, you know, mm. rocking back and forth will throw well, look, you in this, and out of focus The stabilization in this is pretty good, pretty good which is, it's mm. not amazing. It's not terrible, it's somewhere in between. You've got, as you generally do on Sony cameras, you've got off, which you use on a tripod. You've got standard, which is bugger it, I don't know what I'm doing, I might need a little bit of stabilization. You've got active, which is I'm going handheld and I want it as stable as possible. Um, it's okay. What you can you get away with walking along with someone and sort of pointing yeah. it at them if you practice. The auto mode does the job, it's not brilliant. Um, you know, full auto button's there for anyone who needs it. Yeah. Um, but we would highly recommend, you know, uh, maybe auto iris control uh, or auto gain in some situations, but going manual focus is pretty important, I think, for, for a camera like this. In terms of the menu system, I found it to be pretty good. It's, it's responsive. Uh, things like the X160 I found to be bizarre because it was a reasonably modern camera and it was laggy as crap. It was a step backwards. This menu system is very much Sony, which means that for many people it's overly complicated and convoluted. But for those who are familiar with the Sony system, um, it, it's it's responsive, so that's good. Yep. Um, in terms of things that could be improved, the number of buttons. I found this to be a real pet peeve of mine, especially with mm. the default mapping. There aren't enough buttons to, to manually program things and yeah. the defaults are, well, to me at least, they're confusing and bizarre in terms of their choices. So I'd like a few more buttons on there that I could reprogram. On have, this hand especially. I mean, look, yeah, on the right -hand you've side got this things. whole bit of real estate here and there's just two little buttons here. One to punch in your zoom, one for a replay. But yep. what about a joystick just to get through the menus and a menu button or yep. like, you know, just there's so many things that would be handy on this hand because this hand you're often, you know, this mm. is your stance, you're holding, you know, you're controlling your rings with this, this yeah. hand. So yeah, I mean, that's a bit disappointing. The menu button, we've mentioned this, we're harping on this, we know it's a pain in the ass where it is right now on top of the camera. If, if you, you've got a high you find tripod, is like that, how do you get to yeah, the menu? What do I do right now? Like, you know, oh, I've got to get to the menu. Like, yeah, I'll just reach <laughs> up here. And then the directional pad is where uh -huh. you control everything. So you're sort of doing everything blind, which is yeah. bloody annoying. Um, Higher frames per second in Ultra HD. So this will do Ultra HD. It's called 4K, but it's really Ultra HD. Um, it only does 25 frames per second in this country, and I'm sure 20, 29.97 in other countries. I'd like to see it do 50p or 60p. Mm. I think that would be something that uh, would make it a little bit more future-proof. It is capable of doing ND stuff, but it's not variable ND. Um, the camera we're shooting on right in the middle right now is the uh, Sony FS5, Chris's camera, that has variable ND, which just gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of your NDs. Next model will have it. Yeah, I yeah, hope so. Next two. Um, the transition we, we talked about earlier in terms of the optical and clear zoom is a little bit of a problem. Um, there are some banding issues and noise issues I found in the shadows when you start to push mm. the gain. So I, I found the gain actually pretty good overall, but if you're talking about the the lower part of the 0 to 255, the, the shadows and the blacks, mm. if you start to push those with a fair bit of gain, getting up above probably the 12 dB gain, you start to notice quite a lot of uh, noise and artifacting and, and banding issues. Issues. Um, yep. As you push that further and further and further up into the 20s and even 30s dB, you will start to see some issues in the shadows. Yep. Um, the USB connection, it's got micro USB. Fuck micro USB. Yeah. It's a shit connection. Why is everyone <laughs> Why? doing this? Um, yeah, it was this, just, yeah. And it's too bloody short. What the hell is this, Sony? Like, it's well, too short. Give us a longer USB what cable. What would you the use that for, though? First thing I'm going to do is go and replace this with a longer cable. Now, yes, it'd be good if you've got an SD card reader, but sometimes you need to use the USB cable. It's too short, give us, you know, give us this much more. It would make the yep. cable much better. Um, other issues, uh, the charger. <laughs> Where is it? The charger. Sony, it's... what the hell is this? <laughs> this is crap. Where's like... the readout that says how many minutes till it's charged? <sighs> Sony chargers were always amazing. And I mean, the one I, I, I got previously with my 170, was great. I mean, it had, or even so, the, the Z5 had the, yeah. a display on it that said how many minutes till the battery and was you charged. Had two and slots, and two slots on it. But it even was, when they went down, you know, down to the uh, the NEX EA50H, that had a, a one slot charger. 
but at least it had like a few LEDs on it that would indicate where it was up to. There's nothing on this here. This is a piece of shit, Sony. <laughs> you can do better. It has this tiny little jack that is ridiculous. You're going to break something straight away. You have this weird plastic L-shaped thing. You slide in the battery and it's got one LED that says it's charging. Like, this is shit house. Yeah. Do, do better, Sony. And so to go with that, um, <laughs> you get more. this... What the hell is this? Yeah. This plugs in. You've got a figure eight cable, fair enough. It plugs into a wall outlet and then it plugs into this bloody power look, look, brick. Forever. And then that power brick plugs into this stupid thing. This is ridiculous. What the hell is yeah. this? Now, so, I think it was because they're sharing the charger with the, the camera as well. So you could put the, um, the input straight into the DC input. That's why they've done it, but. Don't care, stupid decision. Um, <laughs> Lens. I wish it was faster at the long end, Chris. Do you agree? Yep. Uh, yep. It'd be nice if it was faster than f four, but two point eight all the way through. I think I'd be happy with that. Yep. It not as good as the one point six or one point eight or whatever it was on the Z seven, but faster than what it is. Most stuff on here is, you know, very similar to the previous cameras, and, and I think Sony have stuck with a lot of their philosophy that they've had for the last god years and years and years, mm -hmm. and um, and that has done well. You know, in fact, get to all your features down here with the white balance, shutter, gain, iris, you know, it's all a button press away. So mm. controllability wise, it's a very Sony affair. And look, I can't complain for the most part about it being a, a run and gun shoot camera. But. Yeah, look, it doesn't do any log modes. You're not going to get that flat color profile. It is very much a, a Rec 709 sort of yep. look. But for some people, who cares? That's good. That's I've it's shot it for me. Here yeah. it is. Um, as Chris said, this is a camera with a tried and true form factor. I'm just reading my notes here. It is the same camera that you've used for a decade or two decades nearly. Mm. It's just an updated, modernized version of that. The image quality is good. Don't get us wrong. It is a nice image quality. It's not a super sexy, shallow depth of field cinematic look. If you want that look, you need to go to a larger sensor. Let's be frank about that. It's a workhorse camera. It is a camera that you pull out of the bag, you flip open the screen, you push the power button, you push the record button, and you get what you need to get. There's not really much else to say about this camera. That is its main function, it's its main focus. And it does have SD cards where you can interchange them. So if you do have, for instance, something like a conference where you've got a four hour presentation and you need to keep it going, or a gig mm. where you want to just keep filming for, you know, five, six hours straight, as you long as you've got enough memory cards recording. and yeah. your battery doesn't run out or you're running with power, you can just record forever yep. until you run out of SD cards. So on our audio podcast, we referred to this as the exciting, boring camera. Yeah. Now, after using it for a week and a half, I'm afraid it's kind of the boring, boring camera. However, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It's a camera you get out and you, you do what you need to do and there's nothing fancy about it, mm. but there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, yeah, I went, I went to buy one of these. I walked in with full intention of walking out um, of the store with one um, and I didn't buy one. I mm. felt it and the things that, especially with the menu being up here, there was enough stuff where I was just instantly like, ah, oh, is this going to be a problem? And then I thought about it. I was like, yes, this is going to be a problem. I'm hanging out maybe as getting one as a B camera when they're secondhand. <laughs> yeah, maybe. If one turns up on eBay cheap, uh, I'd probably buy it. Yeah. So. Look, in terms of people that shouldn't get this camera, if you are a filmmaker, don't buy this camera. No, if you want cinematic yeah. looks. If you want cinematic looks, don't buy this camera. However, if you're uh, shooting news, if you are shooting documentary, you could consider this camera. Now, in terms of other stuff that's out there in this sort of price range with these sort of features, yeah, Panasonic, the DVX200. Mm -hmm. So, in future, we're going to do a comparison one on one of the Z150 with the DVX200, and we'll see which one comes out on top, keeping in mind the Panasonic's a little bit more expensive, but they're mm. very similar cameras. So, if you are in the market for this style of camera, that's something else that's worth looking at. But look, overall, it is what it is. It isn't some super sexy beast camera. People made out in many of the reviews that I read this was some super duper camera it's not it's a definite target market in terms yep. of what it's meant to do it does what it's meant what it's meant to do well yep. and but, its um, battery life is incredible uh, if, i mean that's it you can you can take two batteries or three batteries uh with this and shoot for a day, a day. Uh, all day 14 15 hours like a proper film person's day yep and get away with it and that's the beauty of it and you've got everything that you need as far as audio and as far as ND filters, as far as control. I mean, for the price, there's nothing out there that can shoot 4K that has the flexibility and ease of, of access that this really has. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, I mean, 
you can't fault it on that front. And the fact it shoots the SD card and you can keep swapping the cards out and the cards are cheap, that's just yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Perfect. So, look, overall, Chris, um, what would you give this out of 10? I'm putting you on the spot because I didn't ask you this before the show. Um, I would give it a, honestly, for its price, I'd err on a sort of 8 out of 10, but just with the menu options being up there, that, for me, puts it to a 7 out of 10. That's what, that, I, was, that, that, that that's what I was going to say. Because you put it on a cheap tripod and it wobbles every time you touch it. I was going to say you're an easy marker until yeah. that point. Look, it's a 7 out of 10 camera. There are definitely things that Sony could improve on this camera. And in fact, oh, I'm pretty sure they've artificially limited a few things on this camera. But it is a good solid 7 out of 10. And hey, that's a distinction in, in many people's eyes. Yep. Uh, if you want a camera that you can turn on, shoot and everything's there and it's as bog standard as you'd expect from any Sony camera. Shoots 4K, clean lens that's gonna give you a good image throughout its whole range. I mean, you know, this camera is gonna deliver the goods, so. Recommend it for corporate, for weddings, for uh, running on Docker, for news, there's all these things we've said. We, we can't say it's a bad camera. Uh, it's just, uh, just be prepared occasionally to be like, ah, you know, few I need to get to the menu. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it from us at the Purple Fringe. Join us next time, and uh, good day. Catch you later. That was really long. That was really long, but I'm not sure it's a bad thing yeah. for this particular camera. Do you want to have a, a snap through it quick, or do you want to just leave it at that? I think we just leave it at that, because we're not going to reset that. <laughs>